And the article goes on further uh, about the archonic uh, imitation in television. Uh, Jay Widener concludes, humans are imitated on television, but the imitation is altered and always near it, always obscene and profane because the archons not only do not understand the sacred, but they hate it. They are jealous of the natural world and human beings with the natural world. Also, sexual relationships, loving couples, making them angry, and they love violence, are sexually titillated by anger, war, and death. They create war to consume energy from the dying. This would explain why we see so much violence and sex on TV and why uh, pornography sites are rampant on the Internet. Also, it goes on, Archons, a parasite of a different order. Exploring the Archons in his new book, with we Tico, the greatest epidemic sickness known to humanity, Paul Levy writes, quote, when people are, people are infected by Wetiko virus, for they are the host for the Wetiko parasites. The Wetiko germ is a psychic tapeworm, a parasite of the mind. Just like certain computer viruses of malware infect and program a computer to self-destruct, mind viruses like Wetiko can program the human biocomputer to think, believe, and behave in ways that result in our own self-destruction. Wetiko is a vi virulent, virulent psychic pathogen that institute, insinuates thought forms into our mind, which, when unconsciously enacted, feed it and ultimately kills its host. That's us, folks. It doesn't want to kill us too quickly, however, for to successfully implement its agenda of reproducing and propagating itself through the field, it must let the host live long enough to spread the virus. If the host dies too soon, the bug would be prematurely evicted and would suffer the inconvenience of having to find a new residence. That answers the question why they don't kill us off all at once. Mr. Levy continues, like a cancer of the mind that metastasizes in the Wetiko disease, a pathological part of the psyche co-ops and subsumes all of the healthy parts of the psyche into itself so as to serve its pathology. To quote Carl Jung, quote, an unknown something has taken possession of a smaller or greater portion of the psyche and asserts its hateful and harmful existence, undeterred by all our insight, reason, and energy, thereby proclaiming the power of the unconscious over the conscious mind, the sovereign power of the possession. The personality then organizes an outer display of coherence around this pathogenic core, which masks the inner dysfunction, making it hard to recognize. In a psychic coup d'etat, the Wetiko bug can usurp and displace the person who becomes its puppet in its marionette. So in short, where we think that man is controlling the machine, the archon and its black goo, uh, the use of the black goo, is technology controlling and about to take over man, or is taking over man to its ultimate demise. To our ultimate demise. What we need to realize is that there, there are two qualities. One quality is coming from inner earth and one quality is coming from outer space. And they feel completely different. The Falkland Black Goo is called Santan and Oil because it, is, it has full empathy. If you're getting close to this oil, you're coming in a state of mind that is full of love and empathy. You find them in the Kaaba in Mecca, the same form of phallus-shaped structure that is described in Vedic script as Shiva's Lingam, that is described in this uh, Lovecraft script. A fragment of it is part of the central part of the Kaaba in Mecca, and every Muslim in the world is asked to go there once in his life and to kiss this stone. If you go back, you find them on Turkish and Roman, you know, Greek and Turkish coins. You see them left and right of the tree of life in the, in the paradise garden. So getting in contact with this black goo is what caused the deterioration of paradise. And uh, it, is not, it is not easy to understand the overall concept because when you start to deal with black goo, the first thing you need to discover before anything makes sense is that there are two different qualities. We have liquid black goo. It is basically, it has been found on a southern uh, Falkland island, Tula island, 
And this is what the war with Argentina was about, accessing this black goo. We have this type of earth black goo in the Gulf of Mexico. This was what the deep water arise horizon catastrophe was all about. Somebody was uh, shooting a torpedo at the facility, destroying the attempt to get the black goo out of Mother Earth. And uh, we had, I think, eight, eight military uh, submarines getting close to World War III, trying to capture some of that oil after Deepwater Horizon was destroyed. And no single civilian was allowed to go to the beaches to remove the oil. And it was just military personnel with special equipment and fully um, shielded against the influence of this substance. So this is one quality that comes from Mother Earth. And then you have a second quality that is found in connection with uh, meteorite sites. If you look at the thing in Paraguay, you can exactly see by the form the stones are broken in the environment, that that was an impact of a meteorite. If you look into the Arabic mythology, they say the thing in the Kaaba in Mecca is a fragment of a meteorite. And it, this is now not against Muslims. If you look into the Peter's Dome in Rome, you have a big piece of this stone under the Peter's Dome. And if you analyze all the churches built in Middle Ages in Europe, every altar has a black altar stone. And what you feel when you enter a church is not the love of God. Um, it is more like a cold fear. After my first contact with the with his, with his stones, I was this close from killing the hotel director because she complained that I took a shower, although I had to sleep outside. They didn't have any rooms left, so I slept in the car, was dead frozen in the morning, and took a shower in a, in a room of a friend who had the last room that was available. And she just complained that I took a shower without asking for permission. I was really close to killing her. This is what these stones do with people as long as they're unconscious. Splitting of the atom. Programmable matter. And now we've mapped its genome. Aye. Now you've mapped its genome. But now we can begin to give it instructions. This is extremely good. Watch this. We can change anything into anything. Sensual almost, don't you think? <laughs> Do you like music? The pill. Perhaps something a little more violent? This is a rather complex thing. You, you have to, to regard the, the, um, the entire planet as an electromagnetic resonant. And you have waves running around the planet, and with the wave kind of biting in its own tail, you get self-strengthening structures. And at the end, you get the, the sum of all platonic bodies standing as standing waves around the planet. And they have defined frequencies. Schumann frequency is the most known of them. And then the same thing happens in the core of the Earth. You have electromagnetic fields that travel through the stone. And they also build up a grid like this of platonic uh, structures and other structures. Um, and this goes around the planet. You can, you can measure this by sticking two electrodes into the ground. And then you measure 50 hertz from the European electricity grid. And you measure 60 hertz from the American electricity grid. Same strength as the European one. This goes around the planet. Mm -hmm. And if you look at this structure, you can kind of uh, ask yourself the question, are the sky and the earth in harmony with each other. Are they resonating on the same frequencies or not? And the thing is, if they resonate on the same frequency, then the two field structures can unite 
and print out scalar structures, scalar fields. This is what we call life force. Yeah. So life force on planet is dependent, is dependent on the unification of two longitudinal waveforms that need to be in harmony. In former times, we had the trees with an antenna system to the air and an antenna system to the ground, keeping this resonance stable. Mm. Yeah. Then they started to cut down the rainforests, and then you come into this desert state. Desert state means no plants available, disconnection between the two systems, and then they, they start to, to play their individual frequency games, do not reconnect at any point, because there's no antenna system reconnecting them. And then you don't have the development of life force anymore. And then you deeply go into the desert status. So the entire technologies based on Wilhelm Reich are there to reconnect and to extract the wrong frequencies. And this is kind of giving us back the life force. And once we regain life force, we start to ascend and then we collide with the world of the demons. Yes. Yeah? And they hate, yeah, they and that, hate that, that is, uh, that, Then they can't act from the hidden people who are kind of, uh, have high vibrations, a uh, high amount of scalar potential accumulated within their si system. They will shine. This is what you see when you have a holy man in front of yourself. Yeah. And they will be able to see the archons because they're getting closer and closer to their realm. Yes. And this is something because their entire biology, their biology depends on being invisible. Compassion, more kindness, more love, more care. And those are simple human things that we should have towards each other. And once we start to do those simple things towards each other, start to really truly care of what's going on, I think that this presence won't be able to mess with us anymore. And it'll be put back down. It will be thrown back down into the lower depths where it came from. I don't, I think that this isn't a wake up call. It's sort of like when you're sick, your body's telling you there's something wrong. This is a wake up call. It's trying to tell us humanity, something is wrong right now. And if you don't take care of it now, it's going to overtake you. Your own, your own creation is going to overtake you. And I believe that we feed this stuff with all of our negativity. If we start to be more kind and compassionate, then it'll, it'll be fine in the end. But I think it, it, it's pretty much just, that's about it. That's how we'll be fine in the end, is when we start to really care, especially for the children of the world. Because children of the world are what is our hope. They're what's precious. We need to start getting more involved with children. We need to start spending more time with them. We need to start teaching them things of essence. I mean, getting our children to, to plant, to, to plant things, to stop watching so much television and being programmed themselves. You say you are true evil. Shall I tell you what true evil is? It is to submit to you. It is when we surrender our freedom, our dignity, instead of defying you. With T we Tico, the greatest epidemic sickness known to humanity, Paul Levy writes, quote, when people are, people are infected by Wetiko virus, for they are the host for the Wetiko parasites. The Wetiko germ is a psychic tapeworm, a parasite of the mind. It's altered and always near it, always obscene and profane because the archons not only do not understand the sacred, but they hate it. They are jealous of the natural world and human beings with the natural world. Also, sexual relationships, loving couples, making them angry, and they love violence or are sexually titillated by anger, war, and death. They create war to consume energy from the dying. This would explain why we see so much violence and sex on TV and why uh, pornography sites are rampant on the internet. Also, it goes on, Archons, a parasite of a different order. Exploring the Archons in this new book, and the article goes on further uh, about the Archonic uh, imitation in television. Uh, Jay Widener concludes, Humans are imitated on television, but the imitation 